Argentina threw out the tactics after losing in the first match and started from scratch as every match became a knockout game for them. And then in the final, Argentina turned France's strength into their biggest weakness, winning Argentina their third World Cup, while Messi cements his legacy among the best. However, before we can understand how exactly Argentina turned France's strength into their biggest weakness, we need to be familiar with France and Argentina's game plan for this World Cup. Essentially, France chose four attacking players, while six players had to completely focus on just one thing at all times, defending. Deschamps chose a variant of 4-2-3-1, which can also be described as 4-2-4 defending. Germany basically had a free role in midfield, which only focused on defense. The four attackers, along with Rabiot, focused on keeping the shape intact up front, while the back line took care of any direct attempts to get in behind. With each flank being covered by two players, Germany was allowed to roam freely in the middle to cover any gaps left in the shape. While Germany covered space in front of the back line, Rabia worked with the front line to create a shape that could press their opponents while maintaining defensive cohesion. Rabio essentially acted as a box-to-box -box midfielder, with a defensive midfielder beside him. All this is how France ensured defensive stability while being a threat going forward. Now, before looking at what Scaloni's tactics focused on, there's some context about Argentina that we need to go over. After their first loss in the first match of the World Cup, which ended their 36 matches unbeaten streak, Argentina threw away the tactics they were originally going to use in this World Cup and started from the beginning. The new tactics focused on three things. Stability in midfield, when attacking, focus on freeing Messi up. Ensure defensive stability by making up for Messi's shortcomings when defending. And because of this, Messi being lax up top when Argentina are defending does not affect the team in any negative way. If Argentina have Messi pressing a lot, Messi will struggle to make an impact in the decisive moments, the moments which usually end up being the difference at this level. Essentially, while being Argentina's most lethal weapon, Messi can single-handedly create something out of thin air, which sets him apart from most. So instead of constricting players like him to a specific role that cages their potential, it's crucial to cater to players like Messi, so the offense does not get compromised in the quest to be defensively solid. That's why Alvarez has been a blessing in disguise for this Argentinian team, as his work rate protects Argentina from up front while giving Messi a helping hand when necessary. That's the reason why he's been in the team ever since their loss in the first match. The team shape is always based around Messi. Notice how there are two players on Messi's side, so even if he fails to stop the opponent or loses possession, Argentina have an overload in that area in order to stop any threat from France. However, because of this slanted shape, Di Maria does not have a lot of cover on his side. So if he waits, the opponent will be able to exploit gaps on his side and advance upfield. Because of this, Di Maria was to press with vigor the second a player on his side was passed to, since that was the only way he could force the opponent to make a rash move, instead of letting them use the time and space to advance. Meanwhile, the defenders were tasked to man-mark the French attackers, allowing the white players to focus on their targets instead of getting distracted. Argentina switched their tactics based on the playstyle of their opponents, as not only do they have to worry about their principles, but also about adapting to the strengths and weaknesses of their opponents. Now that we know what Argentina based their tactics on, let's dive into what exactly they did which turned the same tactics that won France World Cup last time and got them to final this time against them. Argentina's main task was to deny France's attack any opportunity, and Argentina did it on the biggest stage. Even though Mbappe, who is already regarded as one of the best and hasn't even peaked yet, scored a hat-trick late in the game, France's attack was severely hampered for most of the match. That's solely because of Argentina's defensive tactics, the tactics essentially focused on France's four attacking players, Mbappe, Giroud, Griezmann, and Dembele. They were targeted in multiple ways to ensure they couldn't do what they wanted when attacking or defending. The idea behind the defensive tactics was to disconnect France's front line from the rest of the team. That's why with the whole team focusing on cutting out space in between the lines, it became easy for Argentina to win second balls disrupting France's tactic of using long balls to Giroud in order to bypass the press. 
France rely on vertical passes after quickly rotating to other side, with Varane usually finding Dembele or Griezmann which allows France to get in dangerous positions. France even used this to create their second goal against England, which ended up being the winner for them. But with the defenders man marking the forwards, regardless if they drop deep or not, it became very difficult for France to do anything close to Argentina's box. Argentina did not do this in their previous games. They usually focused on pressing their opponents, which was mostly initiated by Alvarez. When Argentina got on the ball, their main plan finally began. This is what broke France. Left back and Di Maria go up on the left wing, which kept Dembele back. McAllister being in the left half space occupied Griezmann, who needed help from Chomeni to fully cover that side. With Chomeni having to focus on the left half space and midfield, Rabiot needed to come over to help cover the midfield properly. This left the right half space wide open, especially if France's player on that side was more attack minded. So essentially, pushing Dembele back forced his teammates to adapt to a new shape. A shape which put a lot of responsibility on the defensive midfielders. This required the auxiliary players to help out in defense. And because of France's insistence on fielding an attacking lineup but playing defensive tactics, it finally came back to haunt them. Which is why France's manager took off two attackers even before the first half ended. He switched to 4-1-4-1, but by then France had already conceded two goals. All this is why Argentina seemed in full control as the game grew close to an end. But then Scaloni ended up taking Di Maria off, a player crucial to Argentina's tactics which held France back. Di Maria also played a key part in Argentina's route to final in 2014. And this time around, his influence was unmatched on the left. So it's no wonder why his replacement failed to offer what Di Maria did after coming on in the 64th minute. A few minutes later, Deschamps took off a defender and Griezmann since Argentina's tactics forced him to drop deep just to get involved. With a winger and a midfielder replacing them, France finally overloaded the midfield until eventually France win a penalty in the 79th minute. 97 seconds after scoring from the penalty spot, Mbappe equalized the score and take the game to extra time. During times like these, tactics become a backdrop to everything happening on the field. The emotions take over and the game usually seems to open up. In the second half of extra time, Argentina get their third goal through Messi. And then few minutes later, France get a chance to equalize through a penalty. Mbappe scored to complete a hat-trick in the World Cup final, taking the game to penalties. Argentina's goalkeeper Martinez made the difference in the penalty shootout, as Argentina win a World Cup after 36 years. As a football fan, what an ending. But what are your thoughts? What do you think about the tactics used by Argentina and France? I would love to hear what you think, so let me know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you enjoyed the video, share it with someone you know. It really helps.